All right. Well, let, uh, let's get things going. Uh, I'd like to call to order the Sandy Springs Planning Commission meeting for Wednesday, March 22nd. Call the meeting to order. Samantha, if you'd take it from here. Good evening, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the Planning Commission. Today is March the 22nd, 2023. Please confirm your attendance as I call your name. Chair Reed Hag Haggard. I'm here. Vice Chair Andy Porter. Here. Ms. Robin Conklin. Here. Ms. Karen Trilovich. Here. Dave Nichols, which is at, who is absent. Ms. Andrea Settles. Ms. Elizabeth Kelly. Here. Your attendance have been confirmed. The Planning and Commission's duty is to review and provide recommendations on applications for legislative review, including text amendments, comprehensive plan character area maps amendments, zoning map amendments, rezonings, and conditional use permits. The petition will, will be heard in the sequence listed on the posted agenda. Following are some of the rules and procedures for this part of the meeting. The applicant and all those speaking in support of the application will be allowed a total of 10 minutes to present the petition. The applicant may choose to save some of the time for rebuttal following the presentation by the opposition. The opposition will be allowed a total of 10 minutes to present its, op its, its position. Since the burden of proof is upon the applicant, the applicant will be allowed to make closing remarks provided time remaining for the original allotted time. Staff will keep track of the time for both sides. The call, those called to speak will be taken in the order that the public comment cards were received by the planning uh, coordinator prior to the beginning of tonight's meeting. All speakers will identify themselves by name, address, and if applicable, organization before beginning their presentation. Demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited. So please refrain from any applause, cheering, booing, outburst, or dialogue when the person is speaking. Please show the same respect to the person speaking that you will expect to receive. The applicant shall not submit materials to the Planning Commission during the meeting. All materials should be submitted to the, to the Community Development Department at least 30 days prior to the scheduled meeting for inclusion in the normal distribution of packaging to the Commission. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Sam. Uh, we've got an agenda for tonight's meeting. One thing on this agenda that I think has changed in the last, I don't know, few days was a particular case which has been deferred uh, and as part of that, um, I think uh, Ms. Settles has a motion to uh, uh, change the agenda, but to give a chance for people that did come to tonight expecting to hear this case for them to have a chance to speak. So, Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda to, number one, add public comment. And number two, to move letter D on our agenda, which is PC 2023-0010, which is deferred. We would, I would like to request that we move that up to agenda letter A. All right, so we have a um, motion, uh, a second? Second. Second by um, Ms. Kelly. All in favor? All right, so moved. So... As this case has been deferred, Matt, if you'd like to introduce the case and then the deferral, and then we're just going to open it up for public comment. Oh, yeah, hold on. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I jumped ahead. I was so excited to get to that. <laughs> I apologize for that. Uh, we also have, uh, we had a meeting in January, um, which I have the minutes here that all look in order. So uh, a motion to from someone to approve uh, the meeting minutes from motion the January meeting. Ms. Tronovich has made the motion, seconded by Ms. Conklin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let me look at this again, make sure I'm not going out of order. All right. Now, let's go to the first case, which was D, is now A. Matt, if you would just like to intro it and defer to Ginger. How Let me go ahead and call it... Um Okay. PC 2023-0010, 
CA23-0001-6110-2022 Bluestone Road, also 135 Hildebrand Drive, also 51, 51 Sandy Springs Place, a character area map amendment for conservation parks to City Sandy Springs. Presented by Matthew Anspa, Senior Planner. Chairman, as a point of order, typically when we have a hearing, there's 10 minutes allotted to each side for and against. Since this is just a public comment, do you want to allow a time limit per commenter? So you get to make that decision however you want to handle it, but there should be some sort of time limit established. That's a good point. How many cards do we have? How many people do we have for this particular case? Do we know? Chair, we have two. Oh, okay. Well, if all we have is two for this case, if that's accurate, then I think that we're fine with 10 minutes and go from there. So go ahead, Sam. Why don't you call the first speaker? Okay. Um, we have Susan Poole, followed by Mike McCurry. Ms. Poole? Yes, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll try not to make this too long. We have a full agenda, it looks like. Thank you for allowing public comments, even though it has been deferred recently. I appreciate that. My name is Susan Poole. I'm on the board at Bluestone Lofts. We're located right down the hill. We have a lot of people here tonight. We're all dressed in blue just to show our concern about this proposal. Um, and I know I'm very new to this. This is not my area of expertise. I'm just gonna say that right off the start. I'm not here to scream and yell. I'm not here to get my pound of flesh or anything like that, but I am here because I do represent our building. Um, a lot of us that live here are concerned, scared, um, unclear as to what is going on for this corner across from us. We know that the zoning is being evaluated to be changed from conservation to the possibility of zoning. For me, I have come to events at Heritage Park for years before I even was a Sandy Springs citizen and moved into the Bluestone seven years ago. For many of us at my building, I guess we don't understand and would like an answer as to why all of a sudden the leadership here at Sandy Springs feels like it needs to be changed from conservation to the possibility of zoning. It's an amenity that has worked for so many years and enjoyed. Why is it an error? We just don't understand that. Uh, I don't know if we get the answer tonight. I don't know if we have open dialogue, so please let me know how this works. Um, but it doesn't make sense to us why something that has worked so beautifully is now being called an error what needs to be done um, I was coming to ask if we could delay this by 30 days and you all have already done that so that's fantastic that's another point um, another thing that we're all concerned with that live at Bluestone is the amount of traffic if that corner we know there's a lot of development let me say first we're not really opposed to this development. We know it's coming. We're looking forward to it. We hope it's thoughtful. We hope it fits and is proportionate to this area. But we are concerned about these tiny streets handling the ton of traffic that all of this development is going to happen. And then we get concerned that when traffic starts happening on small little one-way streets or two-way streets, then there's eminent domain. And we're sitting on a piece of property that doesn't have a lot of room to give. These are all concerns we have. Um, we want to be heard. We want to work with the Planning Commission and the City Council, not against you. Uh, we're very earnest in that. Um, we can get ourselves organized pretty quickly. Um, 
I don't even know what the next step is. I, I think I know a few next steps, steps that we're talking about. But we really feel like changing this from conservation, it doesn't, to me, make sense because we have the historic museum on Sandy Springs Circle. We have this lovely park that has the beautiful fountains of Sandy Springs. I'm probably one of the few nerds around here that actually walks through that park. I walk all around here aerobically. I go through that park. I see what flowers are in bloom. I go and I sit in Heritage Park even when there's not a concert. Many of our residents at Bluestone do. There's beautiful benches back there. We all enjoy that land. You know, another thought that I had as I'm just kind of rambling on this is maybe City Springs or Sandy Springs government doesn't feel like we have room for two concert parks. I know we built a fabulous concert park up here at City Springs. What about a dog park? You know, it's, there's little things that we wonder about this, and then there's big things. The biggest thing is traffic and the impact. And we feel like the powers that be will flex their muscles and just do what they want, and we're going to be sitting in property that we own. We're not renters. We love our building. We think we have a fantastic building. We certainly have an amazing group of people inside of our building that the majority of us have lived here for a number of years. Our units hardly even hit the market. They sell privately. We'd like to continue that. Um, and having said that, we know there's development coming. We're looking forward to some of it. We're a little scared about some of it. So this particular corner, my biggest takeaway is why all of a sudden is it an error when it's been working for so long? And I don't know if you answer me that tonight or we'll answer that next month when it'll be back on the agenda. It'll be back on the agenda next month. Okay, we'll, I appreciate we'll it. That. But all we right, wanted wonderful. to make sure you had a chance to to speak tonight. I appreciate that very much. Thank, Thank you all. Cool. All right. Have a good meeting. Yes. We have another. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, committee. My name is Mike McQuarrie. I live in the same building as the previous speaker at 6105 Bluestone. Um, we do have a bit of a turnout. Quick show of hands if you live at 6105. There's a lot of us here. I think in any good governance, there's really only two things we ask for. We ask for honesty and transparency. Calling this an error rather than going through the process to get it rezoned sounds at least disingenuous and suspicious, and that's what arouses the fear that was talked to by the last speaker. The other thing is transparency. I don't know if I stand for or against the changing of this until I know what's going to become of it. And I think as the planning committee, you guys probably have some pretty good insights as to what the next steps look like they're going to be beyond that. And that's all we're asking for is give us some transparency as to what's coming up so we can formulate an opinion as to how we feel about it. We love the development that's gone on. We love the walkability. When you take green space away, it never goes back. So please think through that judiciously when you make your decision. You're the planning committee. I feel like you've probably got a plan. All we're asking for is if you just share that with us so we can take proper steps and make proper comment and act accordingly. So I thank you for your time and uh, have a good meeting. Thank you, Mr. McQuarrie. Appreciate it. Um, the um, city management made the decision to defer this for 30 days for I think a lot of the reasons why they were brought up that Maybe there's some more time that needs to be uh, reviewed. Maybe there's some more input that needs to be added. And hopefully that will take place over the next 30 days. It will give you a chance to uh, engage more with the city in terms of your positions. So uh, we will reconvene on this subject 30 days from now. Again, we are a, a recommendation committee to the mayor and city council. They make the decision. Uh, we don't get into the business of negotiating. They do some. So our job here is to look at what the issue is that's brought before us, kind of look at it in a black and white world and make a recommendation based on that, which we assume we'll do in 30 days from now, which I believe is April 19th, I think right. is the meeting. Yes. So 18th. So thank you very much, those of you who came. And we'll close the public discussion for that. 
and move on to our next case. We'll pause for a moment. As much as I think many of you would probably like to stick around, if you'd like to make an, an exit, uh, now would be a good time. You're very welcome. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you for your um, support of Sandy Springs and your concern. And the next meeting is April 19th, Wednesday, the 19th. It's the 19th, mm -hmm. 19th the Wednesday. All right, Sam, let's go ahead and call the next case. PC 2023-0007, RZ 22-0005, 8765 and 8800 Roswell Road and 0 Dunwoody Place. Request for a zoning map amendment rezoning from uh, shop front mixed use, mixed use six-story maximum high to north end mixed use, five-story max height without bonus, NEX-5 over 6. This will be presented by Matthew Enspa, our senior planner. Good evening, Planning Commission. <clears throat> Three cases, as we covered before you tonight, as one was, of course, just deferred to the next meeting date. Up first, we have the North End Mixed Use Rezoning case, as Sam pointed out, at 8765 Roswell Road. As you will see in the following slides, we recommend approval. I think we are uh, opening up the slides, so we'll give a minute. All right, so to the next slide there, Sam. Thank you. The request is a rezoning from shopfront mixed use six stories to north end mixed use five stories and six with a bonus. Everyone should notice the character area map to the left, the zoning map to the right. The properties are surrounded by multi unit urban neighborhoods to the east and corridor and node mixed use and office uses to the north, south, and west. It's important to note that the rezoning request would allow for all of these same uses. Existing conditions show the 13 acres of traditional suburban retail strip shopping center with abundant parking, access point to the north to North River Parkway, and access point to Dunwoody Place to the south. Two right in, right out, Access is off of Roswell Road on its western side. Neighboring the site are out parcels that face Roswell Road with one owned and two unowned by the applicant. Here we see the basic site conditions. Uh, the top left shows the rear of the strip center, pretty much what it looks like all the way down where you have uh, some of the utilities and then really just a vegetative buffer of sorts to the property to the east. Other various photos of the Strip Center uh, from vantage point mainly from Roswell Road. And here we see the survey, always interesting. Here we see the more interesting proposal. Uh, important to note that this is just a proposal and um, staff would not recommend conditioning it entirely code is pretty prescriptive in that and we'll get into that later but this development as it is shows the required three to one multi-unit to single unit residential unit minimum as is prescribed by the new NEX North End Mixed Use Development Code. It conceives of 17,000 square feet of new retail space on the street level of the multi-unit building of the development and as per code a new North South Street will be required, as well as two east-west connector streets at a minimum, creating some new block face for the site. 
Small parks and amenity space make up the rest of the new development, while approximately 35,000 square feet of existing retail would remain from the existing development. The proposal for over 300 total units would be a, an encouraging development for the city as one of our goals is to creatively increase the housing stock and variety where land, and especially undeveloped land, is often scarcely available. The city's trails master plan sees a connection from trail segment 1G to 1F across the southern property line of the site. This would make for a crucial connection to the eventual Chattahoochee River activation and connection that is planned for the area. Uh, as I mentioned earlier with the zoning maps, uh, sorry, next slide. Sam, thanks. The site is currently surrounded by the uses it would like to implement. So we're not talking about anything drastic here as a proposal or as a zoning change in terms of uses. Office, retail, multi-unit. And it would also increase by necessity the stock of single unit housing in the area, which was one of the goals of creating the district as well as all of our plans. Staff advises that no site plan be conditioned again, but rather at most that any condition recommended would generally would be generally enough as to allow placement and size to be determined during the permitting process. The NEX district is highly prescriptive and will keep the proposed plan and the actual plan within the same vein no matter what adjustments may be discovered as necessary in the future. As is the plan staff sees it is certainly in line with the North End redevelopment concepts plan while also helping the city realize developments to promote compact more walkable places and it is appropriate for the area and as planned in the future. Again staff recommends approval of this zoning request RZ22005. Thank you Matt. Um, do we have uh, representatives from the applicant here tonight? Come on up. Good evening. My, my name is Henry Bailey, counsel for the petitioner. My address is 600 Peachtree Street Northeast, Drop My Pepper. Um, first, thank you, Matt. That, was, uh, that presentation was extremely comprehensive um, and uh, conveys exactly what it is the petitioner is proposing to do here on this site. Uh, I'll just reiterate a little bit uh, some of the things that Matt has said. Uh, again, we're looking at a rezoning on this property from shop front mixed use uh, to north end mixed use. It's a 13.15 acre uh, site with the character area of mixed use. Uh, the current site composed, is composed of existing um, sort of low-lying low or one level, rather, excuse me, um, commercial and retail space, and this site proposes the potentially to develop, redevelop the entirety of that site with the exception of about 35,000 square feet of retail space that will remain. We're going to we propose 242 multi-unit dwelling units, 81 single unit townhouses, and again, as Matt stated earlier, 17,200 square, 200,000 square feet of our new retail space. So uh, we, we really think this is a perfect uh, opportunity to redevelop uh, this site in accordance with the newly proposed NEX zoning district here. Um, and we ask that planning commission uh, follow with uh, staff's recommendation. Other members of the applicant team are here to take any questions if you might uh, have. Is that all you got, Mr. Bailey? Yes, for sir. Now? Okay, great. Thank you. We'll reserve the remainder of your time for any rebuttal or any questions that, that we might have. Please do. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. Um, so, Sam, we have some cards? Yes, we have okay. four. So, so uh, let's open the public discussion comment um, section of this case um, and hear from those people, please. Okay, we have first up is Sequoia, Sequoia Hanman. Good evening, Planning Commission, and thank you for your time first. Um, First, I just want to say that I'm not here to oppose the um, North End redevelopment strategy. I just want to say that I'm a longtime resident and renter in Sandy Springs, 
and that I just want to simply provide a perspective to hopefully invoke recognition of policy changes necessary for our city to achieve a future desired outcome around home ownership for the missing middle and affordable multifamily homes. I, like many others in the city, are residents with noble professions and we are engaged and largely contribute to the greater essence of our city and love being a part of the Sandy Springs community. One of my greatest fears is having to soon move away from the only city in Georgia I've known to be home. While most of us can agree that affordable housing is challenging not only here in Sandy Springs but across the nation, there are ways that our cities can help. While we may not be able to do much about ensuring homes aren't bought up by industrial investors, we can incentivize affordability and make it easier for developers to assist and provide affordable housing. It has been stated that specifically for this project, our city prioritized home ownership over affordable housing. However, the current policy in place does not guarantee or support either home ownership or affordability. The city cannot control that the proposed townhomes being built will be owner occupied and offer people like me an opportunity to transition into home ownership. We've seen a similar project with the townhomes across from Dunwoody Place um, be bought entirely from one industrial investor just to then rent them out, which squanders the dream of home ownership and affordability for many renters in the city. So today, I just ask and pose the question, how can we work together to tackle affordability and home ownership because what we've been doing isn't working? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, we have Mary Barron. Good evening. My name is Mary Barron. I live at 100 Saddleview Run. Um, I'm actually kind of echo some of the comments that Sequoia just made. Um, when the North End Mixed Use Zoning was first presented in 2021, I submitted a comment card expressing my concern that the new zoning didn't do enough to encourage affordability. I also sent a letter to city council members asking them to pause and consult with experts to come up with a housing strategy before approving these zoning changes. Now that the plan has been presented for this property, I see that uh, my concerns were warranted and that there won't be any affordable housing here. The apartments will be luxury rate and out of reach for many people who live and work here. Um, the attorney representing Steam Realty said that Sandy Springs prioritized home ownership over affordable housing. Given today's uh, construction market, the townhomes being built here will likely be very expensive. It's an important goal, as Sequoia just said, to bring uh, first-time home buyer opportunities to the city, but I'm afraid that this project is not gonna reach that goal. Um, and we're seeing this trend for private equity firms buying up single uh, family units like this one and then turning them into rental units. We saw it with the property across the street, which was intended to be owner-occupied, but Progress Homes purchased um, those townhomes and they're now renting for over $3,500 a month. So the concern I bring to you is that we may have sacrificed reasonable rental rates here um, in favor of home ownership, but at the end of the day, I worry that we might end up with neither of those things. The goal of the mixed use zoning, uh, allowing for increased density and uh, higher um, height requirements was to attract development, but it was also stated that the goal was to encourage home ownership and housing affordability. And so my concern is that um, I'm wondering how we're going to ensure that those uh, policies are going to be reached with this particular project as it is planned right now. So I hope that you'll take that into consideration as you finalize the details of this uh, development. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barron. Okay, so next we have Tucci Blade, followed by Christian Carter. Uh, Tachi Blade, uh, 7320 Hunters Branch Drive. Uh, I'll keep my comments brief, but basically, um, when it comes to this project, you'll be deciding tonight on the height variance, um, and this is one of the first projects that's come before you in the NEX category. And again, um, the concern is it's obviously not a very popular category. Um, it's not been put into use very often. November 20 of 
November 2021 is when it was adopted. And at that time, the goal of the policy was to spur development on the North End and create home ownership and affordable housing. This is the first case um, that you've heard, and uh, you've got to decide tonight if the exception should be made in the case to allow for um, higher density with the height requirement being lifted. Um, but ultimately, you have to ask yourself, are we meeting the policy? Are we... Um, creating affordability and encouraging density in this area. And regardless of the outcome, I think that you as a planning commission have an opportunity to look at the NEX category and see how to strengthen it so that we are accomplishing the goals of um, providing more housing and home ownership in the area as well as affordable housing. If the application is approved, this new exception will become the rule and increased heights will be in the area. We hope that you'll take a look at this case and consider this new, zoning, new zoning category and realize that the city council probably needs some guidance. Thank you. Thank you. We have Christian Carter. Greetings, how's everybody doing? Um, name is Kristen Carter. I'm an 18 year resident here in Sandy Springs. Um, I previously lived right behind the proposed development at 335 Winding River Drive. I currently live, um, I'm currently renting in Aqua Sandy Springs. I have four kids, um, two of which have matriculated through the schools here in Sandy Springs. Two of them are currently at Dunwoody Springs Elementary School, and my husband is also a Sandy Springs uh, postal worker. So Sandy Springs is really our life. We've enjoyed living here for the past 18 years. Um, I also have a dance and drum cultural arts organization here in Sandy Springs, Jolie Kelly Inc., um, and really been an advocate to all of my family and friends for the diversity that Sandy Springs provides. Um, I'm here, um, like I said, not necessarily in opposition of the mixed-use facility. What I am concerned about is the um, development coming in, rents being raised, as they have been over the past 18 years, and my family and I not being able to afford neither rent nor home ownership because of the increase in, in, in property and in values. Um, currently, you know, it's been hard for kids. Um, renting, it, it's definitely been difficult. So what I'm here to do is ask that there be some consideration um, for affordable housing here in the city and for us to be able to eventually um, purchase property here in the city. Thank you so much. Thank you. Those were all the comment cards, Sam? Correct, Chair. Mr. Bailey, if you'd like to uh, wrap things up or address any of these questions. Absolutely. Thank you. And I appreciate all of, all of the comments from the four uh, commenters. Um, uh, but I want to point out that uh, what we're proposing here is, is directly aligned with the zoning. Uh, while we understand the need for uh, affordable housing, uh, what we've proposed, there, there is no affordable housing requirement here in, in, in Sandy Springs. But to that end, as a part of the development, we are talking about re reserving uh, some of the multifamily units uh, for fire and police. Um, on top of that, as a part of the zoning, the townhouses, which are all for sale, must be CO'd before the multifamily units can be um, developed. And uh, the, to the point of the, the, the height variance, we're not requesting a height variance here. This, the, the zoning district that we're, that we're proposing, the NEX zoning district, allows wood construction here, which would keep uh, the, the prices on some of these units much lower than they otherwise would have been had we had to do uh, concrete construction. Um, and while we understand, again, while we understand that there's a, there's a concern, concern there, there is no affordable housing requirement here in Sandy Springs, and the development is completely aligned with what the zoning district currently allows. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Yep. With that, we'll close the uh, public comment section of this case. Uh, are there any members of the Planning Commission that have questions or comments for further discussion? I, I have a question. It seemed that most of the comments were about the intended use 
uh, and the plan. And I didn't think we were considering that as part of this. The plan could change. I believe that is correct. Yeah, that's accurate. I mean, there is always the opportunity for, let's say, let's say after you guys recommend tonight for, as this goes before council, they decide to put a lot of conditions on it. But it would probably be a little bit counterproductive in that the zoning district was pretty much designed after uh, council put together the study or the consultant to put together the study on the area. Um, and in addition to that, our code states that we, the goal is to stay away from conditions as much as is possible. So yeah, you're correct. And I understand that and I'm in favor of the plan overall. Um, I just think we've gotten a step beyond the zoning questions about, that would conform with the plan into what it will be used for. Mm -hmm. oh, that's my only comment. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. Hope that would answer your question. Anyone else? Ms. Settles? I just wanted to ask Mr. Bailey a question if I could. I just, I noticed in here when it came comments from other parties, there's a comment from uh, the fire marshal that if you, uh, while they have no issues with the zoning as it is, you know, as been requested, um, they certainly don't want it to be conditioned to this plan because it does not work for the fire department access. Obviously, the intent is not to have this conditional to this plan, but um, I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. And I guess it has something to do with the <coughs> side roads and whatnot, 150 feet versus 300 feet. There's just too many cut-throughs there for a fire engine to be able to get through. Uh, yes, I, I, I understand if one of the, if you want to speak to it. Good evening, Jennifer Lacerdo with Genesis Engineering Collaborative, civil engineer on the project. We've been working very closely with the city of Sandy Springs on the layout. Um, that comment in the staff report was the first time we've gotten feedback from the fire department. So that is certainly something that would be addressed as we move forward. Um, like Matthew said, the site plan can be massaged and changed as we get some feedback. So, um, but we were cognizant in the design of it for fire access, so we definitely won't be having conversations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think without question, the site plan would not get approved without fire engines being able to get through there. So during the um, permit permitting process, um, we all the different um, uh, departments and divisions look at it for compliance with uh, fire code, with building code, with planning and zoning and development code, um, and they they have to comply with everything, yeah. even if it's not right in this plan that you that that was shown here we're not here to adopt that plan but one that meets all of those other requirements correct thank you a um, quick quick question maybe for mr bailey or, or maybe matt page six of the shows the aerial image and the blue outline of the of the properties does not include the the um little building on the corner does stream realty own that building mm -hmm. but they're not that's not part of this zoning it has a different character area Andy so it, it will not need uh, to have it will not have anything on it if it's a part of the development that's not already allowed in the district it has so okay, it's so it's, so the it's, fact a, that it's the fact that it's included in the site plan that's attached here that's that it's okay yeah Okay. Absolutely. I, I just didn't. Yeah. When I saw that, I thought. Um, no, good catch. No, we have been down that road before <laughs> with uh, the Adley and the and the owned by others kind of uh, deal we've seen in the past. But uh, I just saw that. Now. So to be clear, it can be um, included with the overall site development plan. It's just that that portion needs to be developed according to the zoning that currently lies upon it. So if, it's, if it only allows three stories, then that's what can go there. But it can be part of the overall uh, site plan. Can a Mrs. Winter's fried chicken go there? <laughs> can, Star, can, Star, um, can Starbucks no comment. go there? <laughs> that's really what I, where I'm looking for is I know that we don't have to plan that's in the package 
doesn't match the zoning and you're, what you're telling me is it doesn't the zoning outline the aerial view well that that particular parcel is not including in the reason in, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got it yeah, yeah. so so you could redevelop that that into some other use and just amend your site plan in accordance with the current zoning and just for, for grins the uses that are available for that are it's shop front mixed use so the name kind of <laughs> gives you a good idea that it's a very retail centric now there's a mix though so but it's you're not talking auto oriented or drive through if you will well that, yeah because that's your question that, obviously that's where I'm thinking is that one of the issues for for the north end has been the, the over the years the continued use of automotive type uses and I'm trying to make sure that we don't yeah as it leave, stands leave that not that you're seeking a loophole. Oh, yeah. No, I understand I, I, that. I just, I've been here long enough that I've seen this happen before. Yes, sir. Absolutely. The, just, just, just to note, the current plan shows townhouses on, on that particular site. It does, but yeah. uh, that's why, that's oh, I, why I was confused because it shows three townhouses yeah. in that particular section. And so, then that site plan doesn't match this aerial photo. No, I understand. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Anything else? Just so yeah. everybody understands that, yeah. that what we're zoning is not wall they own. Right. Or what they're asking. All right. Any other questions for anyone? No? Okay. That said, we have a case in front of us that staff is reckoned approval. Do we have a motion one way or another? I'll, I would like to make a motion um, on case. Uh, PC 2023-0007, RZ 22-0005-8765 and 8800 Roswell Road in Zero Dunwoody Place. Request for a zoning map amendment or rezoning from shop front mixed use six-story maximum height. That's um, SX6 to north end mixed use. That's five-story max height without bonus. This is NEX 5 slash 6. I would like to request a motion to approve. We have a motion this. to approve by Ms. Settles. Do we have a second? Second by Ms. Kelly. Any discussion about that? Any, anything further you want to add? No? Okay. All in favor? No. So moved. Next case. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. PC 2023 dash, I'm sorry, PC 2023 dash 0008, RZ 22 dash 0008, 6400 and 6410 Roswell, Roswell Road. Request for zoning map amendments, rezoning for commercial mixed use, um, three story maximum high to commercial corridor, um, a three-story maximum high, presented by Matthew Anspar, our senior planner. Thank you, Sam. Members, next, as Sam mentioned, we have RZ22008, 6400-6410 Roswell Road. Staff recommends denial. The request is to rezone from commercial mixed use to commercial corridor. Both have a maximum of three-story development. For the character area and zoning maps, as you see above, uh, the two options, protected neighborhood and RD18 to the west, mixed use and commercial mixed use buffering the residential to the east from the highly trafficked Highway 9 Roswell Road. All commercial parcels in the area share a commercial mixed use designation. Here we see the aerial view of the existing conditions of the two subject parcels that make the site. You have Longhorn to the south of the sites, and you have uh, the former Flashers, the foundation, to the north. Conditions of the site on the ground. So to the left, we have the southern parcel, which is 6400, and to the right, we have the northern parcel, which is 6410. Roswell Road. The site overall consists of, as we're all familiar with, mostly asphalt 
foundations of former retail buildings, a two-story commercial building, a billboard, and other minor, minor site elements. There's also, of course, the natural vegetative element buffering the site from the Whispering Pines subdivision to the rear. And once again, the very interesting survey part of the presentation. Next slide. So this slide shows uh, the renderings and a mostly complete site plan uh, with still some work left to be done by some of the major um, items there. To the left on the site plan, you'll notice that the applicant has provided a mostly compliant building and parking lot. They also show their tire change bay facing north and south away from the residential neighborhood to its rear. The bay would also be entirely enclosed. The rendering on the right shows at the top the view the neighborhood would have of the development with the view at the bottom showing what folks would see from Roswell Road. Again, with this request, there's no site plan required at this stage, but is often provided, and the applicant has made it known at every point that the 10,000 square foot discount tire establishment is the development that would move forward if the zoning were approved. The applicant, at noted, as noted, proposes to keep all tire work indoors and not facing the neighborhood. A 30 foot vegetative protected neighborhood transition buffer would be required, which includes a wall. Despite the considerations on impacts on the last slide, auto-oriented uses are not a part of the planned character for the area and do not contribute to the vision for more compact, walkable places as noted in the next 10 comp plan and the Greater City Springs Master Plan as a land use transition. This would constitute effectively a spot zoning. The existing zoning allows for a wide variety of uses. Noticeably absent are auto-oriented uses which can be found, however, in the commercial corridor, which they are requesting to go to. Commercial corridor also tends to, uh, the auto-oriented uses in commercial corridor would tend to obstruct pedestrian environments and the sense of place that uh, the city is looking for in this general area. Uh, commercial mixed use also serves as a buffer from the heavily automobile trafficked Highway 9 for the protected neighborhood Whispering Pines, as mentioned before. And again, staff would recommend denial of RZ 22008. Thank you, Matt. I can't pull this up on my thing, so, um, uh, but, it's, but it's fine. Um, I assume the applicant is here. So let, uh, let us hear from the applicant, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I have a brief presentation that I think they're going to load, but while they're doing that, let me introduce myself. I'm David Kirk, partner at the law firm of Troutman Pepper Hamilton Sanders, 600 Peachtree Street, uh, northeast in Atlanta. Uh, with me this evening um, are Sheldon Scott and Chaz Morris. They both work uh, for Discount Tire and have their entire career. Sheldon's been with Discount Tire for 35 years and Chaz for 16. They started as tire techs, uh, changing tires and repairing tires. Gives you an idea of the career opportunities that, uh, that uh, Discount Tire has, uh, the values that they have for their team uh, and for the community. Uh, with me also this evening is Kelly Wagner, who's the uh, engineer for the, for the project. Uh, and we also have Ron Benmoshi, who's with the, um, the group that owns this property. Uh, and, and he's happy to talk about this property, uh, as are the other folks, talk about specifics about discount tire or engineering issues. Next slide, please. Let me give you a little background about discount tire. Uh, it was started in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with six tires and one person. Uh, that person went on to uh, move the, uh, the company to Scottsdale, Arizona, after uh, considerable success. There are now over 1,100 locations nationwide. More than 20,000 folks are employed. Here in Georgia, there are 42 uh, current locations and over 600 people employed. Uh, it is the most successful, uh, largest, and fastest growing 
tire retailer in the United States. Uh, their business is the retail sale of tires and the installation of tires. They don't do mufflers, they don't do auto repairs, they don't do transmissions, they do tires. And just recently they started doing wiper blades too. Uh, they focus on great service, uh, being part of the community, uh, and a guarantee. Let me draw your attention to that last bullet. Uh, the typical store hours are 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, similar hours on Saturday, and they're closed on Sunday. I would submit that virtually any other um, uh, use you would put on this property uh, would have longer hours and would be open on weekends. Next slide, please. As Matt mentioned, this is about a 10,000 square foot building. Uh, all work will be performed inside the building. There's not going to be any outside work, outside displays, out, outside storage. Uh, it will serve approximately 100 customers per day. Uh, I know Matt mentioned that uh, this was an auto-oriented use and, and was, would detract from the pedestrian environment. I think with the low amount of traffic you have uh, associated with this, uh, this property, um, as proposed, it would in fact enhance the pedestrian environment because you would have less traffic in and out of the site uh, during the day. Uh, the proposed, we would submit the proposed rezonings consistent with the comprehensive plan, uh, the city center master plan. Uh, this is in the north gateway area, and I'm quoting from, uh, from the plan that says it offers opportunities to reaccommodate valued auto oriented uses that are less desirable in the heart of city center. That is what your, your, your planning document says. This is not in the city center, it's in the North Gateway area. Uh, also, the plan indicates uh, that there are redevelopment opportunities that should be taken advantage of this area. Uh, Freestanding commercial structures and, in, and single users are all acceptable, and that's what this is. Next slide, please. Current site conditions, I think Matt did a good job of this. Uh, it's been vacant for 15 years. Uh, under the previous zoning, under the current zoning. Uh, the billboard that's there would come out, uh, the old uh, restaurant building that is very close to the neighborhood uh, would come out. Um, the site would be redeveloped uh, with the landscaping uh, that's required uh, by your code. Uh, the three curb cuts that are currently on Roswell Road would be reduced to one. And I would submit again that that enhances rather than detracts from the pedestrian environment. The next slide, please. This is the, the site plan overlaid on the uh, aerial of the area. Uh, we, we do respect the buffer in the back. Uh, that will be maintained uh, and, and enhanced uh, in consultation with your staff. Uh, we're providing interparcel access to the north. Uh, to the south, to Longhorn, it's much more complicated because there's a substantial grade change and it would require Longhorn to sacrifice some parking. Uh, again, one curb cut. The building has moved well away from the neighborhood. Uh, it too will serve as a buffer from the heavily traveled Roswell Road corridor to the neighborhood. Uh, it would have the streetscape improvements uh, as well, and the building has the form uh, that, that your plans have asked for. Next slide, please. Just very quickly, the, the elevations. Um, I would submit the west elevation. Matt said this is what the neighborhood will see. Again, because of the buffer in the wall, the neighborhood will not see the back end of this, this store, though it is very attractive. Uh, the east elevation will face Roswell Road and will be up close to the road in the shop front type, um, type form. Next slide, please. And this is just a, a slide showing the, the north and south elevations where the cars will enter uh, and they have, they have uh, drawdown doors. Uh, again, um, we believe this is pedestrian friendly. I'm a little, um, you know, I take issue with the fact that we provide services for automobiles to, uh, to mean we are auto oriented. Does that mean Publix cannot sell auto wax? Um, I think auto oriented has to do with the presentation to the, to the street, whether it respects the pedestrian environment. We're certainly doing that here. Um, and with 100 trips a day, I think that is pedestrian oriented. Um, seems to come down to the use. I think that's what you'll hear from the neighborhood that they don't want this use here. Uh, staff says we have enough of these types of uses. 
uh, I would submit that they have not done the market studies that Discount Tire has that indicate the need and the desire for that here. Uh, I also worry about the parade of horribles that the staff report lists uh, in, in the event this gets rezoned. Uh, the easy way to, hap to deal with that, I would submit, uh, would be to provide conditions that limit the uses. Um, that's all I have to say for now. I'd like to reserve my three minutes for rebuttal, uh, if necessary. And I appreciate your time, and the whole team is here to answer questions uh, at the appropriate time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. Sam, how many cards do we have? We have, um, Chair, we have two. All right. So uh, let's open the uh, public um, comment and discussion portion of this case and call our first. Okay, the first one is going to be Rhonda Smith, followed by Alan Andrew. And could you state if you're in favor or against, please? We just need to know the for in favor oh, yeah. or against. I'm sorry, the, in opposition. Good evening, Planning Commission. Rhonda Smith, 76 Long Island Place, Sandy Springs, speaking to you on behalf of the Council of Neighborhoods Board as their president in opposition to this request. Allowing additional industrial uses by spot rezoning of this property to commercial corridor will continue to perpetuate the harsh complexion of uses on Roswell Road. Our comprehensive plan and Roswell Road small area plan provide specific directives as instruments of change to improve this complexion. A desire and goal of every city council since 2005 has been to clean up the auto-oriented Roswell Road that is filled with automotive-related and undesirable uses, many of which are immediately adjacent to protected neighborhood. While some of these uses are essential, how many is enough? In the 1.5-mile stretch of Roswell Road between Cliftwood Drive and Abernathy, there are four gas stations, three car washes, two tire shops, an auto repair shop, an advanced auto parts pep boys, a car dealer, a car rental agency, and a Take 5 oil change service. Throw in some EV charging stations, and there's more than 14 auto-related uses in 1.5 miles. Must this be the Roswell Road of our future that we continue to add auto-oriented uses to? Regardless of any merits anyone can speak to of the intended tenant, this is still an auto-oriented use. Should this rezoning be approved and this use be built as described by the applicant, whose goal is to build it and operate it with a ground lease, this use will be here forever. It will never go away and may well serve to participate precipitate additional requests for changes to commercial corridor along this stretch of Roswell Road and well beyond. While presently an empty lot and an unutilized restaurant building, a posture and thought process of approving this rezoning to get anything that's better than what's there now will surely install a use that will create a permanent barrier to any positive change, nor will it achieve that which the community desires and deserves from a better Roswell Road. And while underutilized, it is not the responsibility of zoning actions or this body to change or improve the financial viability of this or any other property. Priority actions in the Russell Road Small Area Plan call for creating enhanced places in the public realm, redevelopment parcels as focused mixed-use nodes, residential development that supports families, and enhanced gateways that promote improvement of the corridor's visual identity. This in concert with the recently approved Roswell Road Access Management Plan and City Springs Master Plan, as well as our Transportation Master Plan, are all tools for improvement. These all have goals, directives, and projects in their work plans that drive the actions to improve the uses, environment, and usability of Roswell Road by something other than auto-oriented and auto-centric businesses and uses. I will submit to you that approving this rezoning to allow for construction of a discount tire at 6400 and 6410 Roswell Road will not achieve any of the goals of these plans. If city leaders thought it acceptable to have body shops, tire shops, and other vehicle-related industrial uses within the CX commercial mixed-use zoning district or any district other than CC and IX, then those uses would be allowed by right on this property today and there would be no need for the CC zoning district. There certainly are grandfathered vestiges of these uses in zoning districts that would not allow them as new development today. 
the redevelopment of these properties where these exist can't come soon enough to help improve these properties with new uses that are not auto-oriented or auto-centric. While the applicant's zoning analysis under the criteria that, quote, the zoning map amendment substantially conforms with the comprehensive plan, end quote, discusses how the proposed development fits the description of the commercial mixed-use character area, it is a description more specifically now driven by the requirements of the development code. The applicant's analysis neglects to include the overarching key needs and opportunities for land use and community character described under the comprehensive plan that are central to the plan's highest goals. Item B on page 78 of the comp plan, quote, create compact walkable areas with a mix of uses, end quote, specifically speaks to redevelopment of underutilized properties to encourage a higher density mix of uses at key nodes and activity centers, as well as along major corridors, integrate multiple land uses, including residential, ground floor retail, and office as part of individual structures and compact nodes. Development that fits this use profile is more likely to be that which encourages a walkable, amenity-rich environment that serves the nearby neighborhoods, does not impact them with the noise of tire installation or repair, and moves Roswell Road a step closer to a level of appeal that can then continue to attract better uses. You are about to hear from the Whispering Pines neighborhood as to what their concerns are and why they too oppose this rezoning. Council of Neighborhoods asks you to help move the needle towards achieving the goal for Roswell Road by denying this rezoning to CC Commercial Corridor. And please, do not consider any approval under any conditions as suggested in the staff report. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Smith. We have Alan and Alan Andrew. Good evening. Alan Andrew, 154 Chaseland Road, president of Whispering Pines HOA. We are a 162-home neighborhood located west and borders the rear of the subject property. We appreciate the professionalism that all parties have demonstrated thus far on this process. Over the years, we've had to fight for our borders. We've had to stress the importance of developments that enhances our neighborhood. I'm here on behalf of the neighborhood requesting the Planning Commission to deny the proposed zoning changes that would allow the building and operation of a discount tire facility for the following reasons. Number one, the applicant does not fit zoning specifications per the Sandy Springs Comprehensive and Master Plan. The neighborhood unanimously wants to preserve the vision of what Sandy Springs Master Plan outlines in their city central district. The neighborhood feels that any changes to accommodate the applicant only undermines the city's and the neighborhood's long-term vision. Having another auto tire related store is not what we want at the city of Sandy Springs, Yates, or our neighborhood, especially since it would make the fourth or fifth tire service store within four-tenths of a mile of the location. Making an exception for one sets a dangerous precedent. The whole street block could change, and who knows what comes next. Number two, environmental impact. There's no question that Discount Tire is a reputable organization, but the neighborhood fails to believe that the noise will be maintained at all times. Upon a field study, we discovered multiple noises from a similar location. Noises such as car alarms, music, impact tools, ramp plates, car lift warning signals, and forced air systems. These noises will echo through our neighborhood. Additional traffic and delivery, of delivery trucks and tasks from parking cars and finding cars with car alarms is going, only going to add to the volume of noises. We have approximately 20 homes within 500 feet of the rear buffer. Number three, fails to demonstrate city's plan of walkable and strengthen the character along corridor. The neighborhood feels particularly, the, the neighborhood feels that the applicant particularly fails in this to offer a walkable environment we long, that we long for in our neighborhood. Neighbors would not walk to this. They would avoid it due to the increased traffic of going and coming from another auto-based business. The neighborhood wants to strengthen the character 
by having amenities that lure visitors, that create community camaraderie. Uh, amenities like you might see in the business district of downtown Roswell or maybe Alpharetta, not a shambly area where dozens of auto facilities align the Peace Street Corridor. Finally, number four, and in closing, enforcement. Whispering Pines is concerned about the enforcement of codes and conditions that may come up. For example, having the, the uh, bay doors closed while you're working on the vehicles. The neighborhood in the city has a lot of experience in this. We currently have similar active issues going on right now on our border lines that are active. I want to thank you for your time and your consideration. As our community has always had to protect its borders from potential negative impacts, including those related to pollution, noise, land use, utilities, water, buffers, and traffic, we strongly urge the Planning Commission to deny proposal of zoning modifications and most importantly, stick with the Sandy Springs Master Plan. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Mr. Kirk. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Um, certainly what you heard was a, a parade of horribles that, was, that, that folk, env folk envision if you support this rezoning, if the city council ultimately approves it. Uh, I would submit that that, that is a, a false parade that's being marched in front of you. Um, with regard to the noise, the um, gentleman who spoke, Mr. Andrew, uh, went to a site where Discount Tire or a, another tire store has bays that open toward the rear. That, do, that will emit sound more so than bays on that, where the entrances are on the, on the ends. We've taken great care uh, to, to, to address that. Um, it was also mentioned that this is in the city center district. This is not in the city center district. This is in the North Gateway area. And again, the North Gateway area specifically says uh, that it is appropriate for auto-oriented uh, type uses to be relocated in this area. The ones in city center are non-conforming. When they, when they close or go away, they're not going to come back. I would submit that this, this is a walkable design. The, it's a retail type front. It's close to the street. The pedestrian improvements will be in place. Uh, and it will have a low traffic volume and only one curb cut. Again, as it stands now, there are three curb cuts. There's a billboard on the site. The existing restaurant structure is smack dab against the neighborhood. Uh, and my experience with restaurants, they tend to be open late in the evening, late on weekends. They have perhaps more traffic and even more noise, uh, particularly on weekends. We're addressing that. We're addressing the, the buffer. Um, I think that's all I have to say other than um, Discount Tire uh, exists in nice areas. Go to Johns Creek. There's a new discount tire there that Mr. Wagner and I worked on several years ago. Uh, that is in a, a high-quality shopping area. It's right up against the street. It's, an, it's a, a very nice facility. Um, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good here. This property has been vacant uh, for 15 years under the current zoning, uh, and we're offering to put a high-quality, attractive use here. Thank you so much. We'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. Uh, with that, we'll close the public uh, discussion, comment uh, section for this case uh, and open it up to members of the Planning Commission that might have uh, questions or comments. I do have a comment over here. Yes. About sure. um, the City Springs um, versus some other portion of the city. In the last City Springs master plan update, we did include those parcels in the planning area, in the study area. It hasn't been rezoned to City Springs, but it was in the study area. 
and I believe that that was presented to council and approved, yes, correct? correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Right. yes. Go ahead. That's the question I was going to ask. So there's been a reference of the North Gateway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you just explain a little bit of that? Well, um, in the previous planning, um, it was part of the North Gateway, but in the most recent um, City Springs Master Plan, which was adopted in December of 2022, um, th these parcels were included as part of the study area. So um, the City Springs Master Plan includes these parcels. So the statement that it's in the Northgate area is incorrect presently. Well, we didn't specifically take it out. So maybe it's in two places, but it is in the City Springs okay. master Thank planning you. area. Okay. That Thank is correct. You. Thank you, Michelle. Robin, you had a comment or question? Yeah, I, uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm very thankful to Discount Tire because <coughs> y'all hired my son, and he had a very good experience. Um, but one of my questions is as far as, and, and Matthew, this may be a question for you, as far as the time that I've spent a discount tire, it has been very loud. And as far as the plan of keeping the bays closed, is that enforceable or is that a, like in theory that they would keep them closed? I mean, I know where he worked, they were always open, so I never saw them closed. Um, that the times that I was there. So. In theory, you know, I mean, you can control it as much as you can, but unless you have somebody sitting there all day or we have like a remote control from City Hall. Just kidding. That, that would never happen. But yes, in theory. All right. Anyone else? All right, with that, we have a case in front of us that um, staff has uh, recommended uh, denial. Um, do I have a, a motion on this zoning map amendment from anyone? Give it a go. Give it a go. In, in full detail? Yes. Um, with reference to case 20. Is your mic on, please? Reference to case 2023-0008, RZ22-0008, 6400 and 6410 Roswell Road, dash, request for a zoning map amendment rezoning from commercial mixed use to three stories, am I on the right one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Three stories maximum height to commercial corridor. Three stories maximum height without bonus um, is CC-3. Recommend that this be um, denied. We recommend denial. Okay, I think you, you might have added a few extra words, but I think we understand what you're referring to That's in this words, particular yeah. case. All right, so Ms. Kelly has made a motion for denial. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second it by Ms. Settles. Uh, any discussion? Uh, to that end, put to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Uh, the, the motion of denial is uh, approved. Sam, we have one more case, correct? That is correct, Chair. We have PC 2023-0009. That's TA 23-0001. An ordinance to amend development code section 9.6.3, standard section 9.3.8, administration and division 12.2, defined terms, Presented by Matthew and Spa, our senior planner. Me again, last time, promise, for tonight. So, <laughs> I know, they really frustrated with me. As Sam said, this is text amendment 23, four zeros and then a one, if you uh, lose track. Lastly, we have text amendment 23, triple zero one. This is three parts. Correction to the administration of the tree bank. 
a minor exemption to the Nancy Creek mitigation requirements for small replacement jobs and a more dictionary centric definition for our land disturbance. So for the tree bank edit, the slide does not reflect this, but the edit corrects an error in that currently the show period for tree status post land disturbance begins while disturbance is still present. So the edit would make it so that the three year period begins when the development of the site actually ends, when there's a uh, CO or what have you, CC. But sorry, I was saying the slide actually is uh, copy paste, it looks like, of our Nancy Creek discussion. So for that, the amendment would allow up to 500 square feet of impervious, an existing impervious area to be replaced. So this could be a pool, could be a deck, could be part of your house, anything that's considered impervious, part of your footprint. And this could happen up to every three years. So 500 every three years and no more. Staff thinks this is reasonable to allow for reinvestment into existing properties as they age in a very responsible and incremental way. And then lastly, as mentioned, our existing definition for land disturbance reads more like a winner take all, every type of situation you can possibly think of in one definition uh, for possible activities. And the new definition reads more like you may find, again, in a dictionary where you have multiple meanings depending on the development situation. So, for instance, planting a garden and the land disturbance activity involved in that is different from the land disturbance involved in preparing a site for a 12-story building and they should be regulated differently. And so definitions help with that and for qualifying certain types of activities. So you see here, uh, this is the tree bank edit. Currently it reads after three years from the date of the payment of the escrow funds that the applicant has the right to petition the city arborist basically for their money back that went into the tree bank to make sure that the tree survived uh, whatever disturbance that they did. The new reading would be that after three years from the date of receiving a CO or CC, the applicant has the right then to petition the city arborist. So this would be a true and fast three years from the date that disturbance ended. Next, we have the standards for um, Nancy Creek adding an exemption. Again, it's pretty straightforward. You have 500, and square, 500 square feet as the maximum, and that's every three years. So you can't do 500 square feet, come back in a month and do it again. It has to be a three-year um, time period between when you apply for your permits. And again, we think that this helps with those minor improvements people make to their homes. Nothing groundbreaking, at least not in a uh, larger sense, maybe a technical sense. It, it allows for them to reinvest in their current home rather than maybe the option might be to just tear down and start over. Uh, and it keeps the costs reasonable in that regard to what they're doing. And then lastly, you can see on the top there in the red letters, that uh, that would be what is going to be crossed out, land disturbance. It is literally just a run-on sentence or two or three, and it includes like every possible land disturbance somebody could think of. The new definition would have a little more orderly approach, and again, it would allow staff to more easily qual qualify uh, the type of work being done and apply different regulations based on that. We recommend approval of this text amendment. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> Is there any public discussion on, of this? There, was there, are there any, Sam? No, there are no public okay. comments on this. <clears throat> then I'll open up the public discussion and close the public discussion at the same time and turn to the commission here. It's, if anybody has any questions of Matt or comments or suggestions? No? Anyone care to take a shot at a motion? Before we just, one, oh. well, maybe we'll do it in another section, but just a comment on 
is there ongoing work on the tree ordinance? Is that just a, I know that kind of that people just go crazy when you start that. But I, I not at this time. There is not. It's it's almost criminal what's going on with in, with this, and, and we'll save that for another time. I'm yeah, let's sure. let's save your cr criminal accusations for another time, and let's go ahead and finish this particular case. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, so, a motion. All right, I'll be glad to make a motion. Um, we're talking about PC two zero two three dash zero 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 nine. TA 23-0001, an ordinance to amend the development code section 9.6.3, standards section 9.3.8, administration and division 12.2 defined terms, um, as presented by Matthew. And I make a motion that we approve these changes. Motion to approve by Ms. Settle, seconded by? Second. Thank you very much, Mr. Porter. Uh, any Additional comment uh, to a vote. All in favor? Uh, so moved. And that is the end of cases. So we can go to ongoing business, which I think would be an excellent opportunity for two, two things. And I, I don't want this to turn into a complaint session, but I, I spoke with this gentleman over here the, about the, I, I know it's my technological disaster of, knowledge here but I I can't get this thing to work and it needs to stay on for more than about um, a minute because then it, I have to reboot it all the time and I can't I can't make a coherent statement we'll, we'll have IT look at them but it I'm looking to replace them this coming year so hopefully that yeah I think one of the challenges I face with it too Andy is that when I open it up it's it's all there, but they're, I got to go, yeah. go, go, and I, I can't find and where like to, it is. Yeah, today I kept scrolling like crazy, and it would get down to enough places, and I think it would buffer itself back to one, back to page one. Andy, are you saying you cannot keep up? Uh, no, I can't Just keep up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I struggle mightily. <laughs> and, then, and then the second thing, of course, was my comment. At some part of a retreat, or a conference that we go to that we all get together and maybe a, go for attacking this tree ordinance. Um, I look in my neighborhood, Mount Air Springs, 250 out of 400 homes have been, have been demolished and good. And there was, a, there was a house I drive by every day and it started off with a wooded lot with a beautiful home on it and now it has a giant home on it and exactly eight trees, none bigger than this big. I, walk, I got out of my truck the other day and just walked back there stunned that we don't have um, some protection for any other people around. And then I watched the other folks, they, they take out the trees and then they wait six months. And then you see the tree guy come back. And like today when you pull in Long Island on the third house on the right, they've got a, st a stack of logs and those logs are this big around. So somewhere in his yard, he took three giant trees out and it just seems odd that we can do that and I know some of it goes to to our uh, retaining wall stuff that we talked about that if you can put a retaining wall here and fill behind it every tree that's behind that retaining wall that got filled up by what we agree on six feet um, those trees are all die mm -hmm. so it just seems odd to me city that's based on its tree cover we should we shouldn't we should do better than that and I'm, I'm more than willing to uh, sit on a committee or sit on a group or help formulate any of those plans I don't I don't want to complain and not offer so I enough, agree enough. no I I agree with him on that I mean we see it all the time and you know usually it's after the fact they've come in they've cleared and before you know it oh yeah you know it, it's done and you know, we're all behind. We, we've all seen it. So the next time that we have a conference on that, uh, I, please include me, and I'll be, I'll be happy to serve. I would like to be included as well. And I, I went at one point when I knew somebody was going to remove trees and did the math on the circumference, and they have to be very large trees in order to have to get a permit to remove them. I mean, it's amazing 
what all can be taken down without a permit. I think it needs to be increased, really. Okay. Uh, any other ongoing business? Any new business? Just yeah. that we'll be back here in April. Yeah, we will be back in April for that that was deferred, right? And maybe something else exciting will come along then. Uh, uh, I feel like Ginger's here. Anything you want to add? We just kind of <laughs> haven't been here. I feel like we should hear from you. No? It was an honor to be here tonight with you all. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. The Thanks for everyone. This is overwhelming there. <laughs> and with that, uh, motion to adjourn. Motion adjourned by Mr. Trilovich, seconded by all in favor. We are adjourned.